I'm Harold. Uh, we've been uh, working on uh, casting a big old chunk of aluminum, and today we're going to finish up the job. Uh, of course, I, you know, I do this part after the rest of the video is already done, so I know how it comes out. But I got to warn you that Bozo's been sitting around with a couple of cards up his sleeve, and he pulls those out on me, and. Uh, I can tell you one of them was uh, the fact that I bought quarter inch tubing to supply the gas and it was way too small. So I had to go back and get some nice large tubing. And uh, that was bozo number one and bozo number two is I, I, I made a, quite a bit of black video there because I forgot to open the lens cover so you didn't get to see me discover that the quarter inch tubing was too small. But anyway, we're going to get on with that and various other disasters that uh, will befall us here before we get through. But before we get into all that, I want to talk about uh, Thibodeau and Boudreaux. They're a couple of Cajun fellows live down in South Louisiana, and they like to duck hunt. Better than anything in the world, they like to duck hunt. And duck season had just opened up. And they were sitting down there you know, at the local tavern there discussing it. And Thibodeau tells Boudreaux, he says, uh, you know, Boudreaux, he says, uh, every year, he says, we get down there, we're ready to get them ducks, and he says, I got my automatic shotgun all ready to go, and he says, and I start to lift it up, and the ducks take off, and he says, and we don't get very many ducks, you know, and uh, Boudreaux says, yeah, he says, uh, so what are you going to do about that, and Thibodeau says, well, he says, there's something else I noticed, he says, every time we go down there duck hunting, he says, the cows are out there grazing amongst them ducks, and, and the ducks, they don't care nothing about it. The cows just keep on eating grass and walking around, and the ducks just keep on swimming, and, and the cows just eat grass and move on around amongst the ducks, and, and the ducks don't care nothing about it. They don't pay them no attention. He says, so when we go duck hunting today, we're going to be a cow. And Boudreau says, what are you, are you crazy? How are you going to do that? And the said, we're going to stop down there at the tannery, and we're going to buy us a cow hide, and we're going to get in that cow hide, and he said, we're going to go along and pretend to eat a little grass, and we're going to move in a little closer on them ducks, and we pretend to eat a little grass and move in, you know. And when we get ready to shoot, we're going to be right up on top of them ducks. So sure enough, they got on the cow hide, and they got down there, and Thibodeau got in the front, and Boudreau got in the back, you know, and they began to walk along, you know, that cow hide. They'd stop and pretend to eat a little grass, and they'd move up some more and stop and pretend to eat a little grass. And they both of them had their shotguns up under the, you know, up under the cowhide. They, what they had, a couple of automatic shotguns there that uh, they'd shoot three times when the game warden was around, and five times when he wasn't, you know. And uh, they was ready for some ducks. So they get out there anyway. They're getting closer and closer in on those ducks, you know. And and uh, Thibodeau's just getting ready to pick his shotgun up and take an aim, and all of a sudden Boudreaux starts pushing, jumping around the back there in the back. He says, Boudreaux, Boudreaux, calm down. What's the matter with you? He said, uh, we're just now ready to get us some ducks. He said, I'm just about to take aim on them ducks. He said, be still back there. Boudreaux says, he says, never mind about them ducks. He says, here comes the bull. Well, you know, this, uh, this is something that I had not uh, expected to have come up. Uh, I don't mean this stuff like this is, you know, Adam Booth's channel or something, but. I got uh, a piece of a viewer appreciation mail here. I, this is the, the very first time this has ever happened, and uh, I was sort of caught off guard. Uh, and it's sat there waiting, waiting for me to open it up for a couple of days here because I was having so much trouble with other things. Uh, there's a note in here. In fact, it's in an envelope. Think how envelopes I buy. I got a lifetime supply from Sam's, and uh, it's from Clement Drilling and Geophysical Incorporated. Okay, it says uh, here are some uh, bits of various aluminum, steel, brass, and bronze where I knew what the material was based on the markings I labeled it. Several of them I think I know what they are and so I added a question mark. 
I hope these will help as you're doing your various projects. I know how nice it is to have some stock on hand, the odd project that comes up. I wish I could have sent a, a bit longer stock, but I was trying to get it in a flat rate box without making it too heavy for the postal workers. I got this material for less than scrap prices and I grabbed more than I'll be able to use in years, so I've been trying to spread it around to folks that might be able to put it to use. Keep up the good work since, uh, sincerely, Craig Clement. Well, Craig, I really appreciate this. Uh, it is kind of hard to find metal stock. Yeah, that's a... Uh, Undoubtedly, aluminum of a, a large diameter. Um, looks like uh, key stock, maybe. Uh, I'm sure I know less about what it is than he does. Ah, nice piece of plastic to make something. I, I ordered some stuff the other day just to get a piece of plastic. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I know that'll come in just right on something. And, uh, whoa, it looks like a bunch of uh, brass. Yeah, or uh, bronze, okay. A pile of bronze here. Uh, long pieces, short pieces. Whoa, that thing tried to get away. I'm gonna set that right down here. And, now that's a chunk of aluminum. That's that's turned there as big as the one I just cast. <laughs> right at it, I'll bet you. Yeah, I bet it is. Well, that is really a neat piece of aluminum. Here's a couple more pieces here. One by I guess two and. Like about a quarter by an inch and a half, and well, I'm clumsy, but uh, 60 61 on the ends here, and uh, let's open this up to see what it is. Looks like uh, brass, well, one brass and uh. Make one stainless. Mm. Ah, put it apart like that. Yeah, well, it's hex, but it's not brass. It's something else, I think. All right, and then here's some aluminum tubing and some bar stock. And should have kept my knife out. I cut down the side of it here. I guess the Toyota kid do the same job. Maybe. Not as well as the knife. I guess you should use what it's made for. Yeah, aluminum tubing. Aluminum bar stock. 2024. Okay. And 6061. So that's that's probably got me supplied for quite a bit of projects in the future there too. Considering, uh, Greg, I appreciate it. Uh, I'm sort of totally stunned by all this. Don't really know what to <laughs> what to do from here. But I guess that's, uh, that's going to keep me in, in metal for quite a while. Thank you. <laughs> All right, let's go, uh, let's go in there and play with the foundry a while. You know, we can heat things up. Okay, now then, after making a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> black video, uh, at least I can certainly say, Houston, we have fire. Look at that, I've invented fire. Now then, all we got to do is just keep this little buzzer going and uh, drop all that orange bucket of aluminum in it. I knew that the quarter inch hose wasn't going to do and it didn't. It was way too small. Couldn't get enough natural gas in there. So I went and got, got something a lot bigger. And uh, I think now, now everything's going to work out. 
I'm just rumbling on over there. It's 452 a minute ago. I wonder what it is now. It's up to 523. We got to go more than double that, but uh, as it heats up, I might be able to add a little bit more gas to it. We just have to sit here a long time and wait to see what happens. Well, it's been going on in there, I would guess, 45 minutes to an hour, and I've got almost all the aluminum pieces out of that bucket, and I found a couple of uh, big old three-inch pistons that I threw in there. Uh, I think it's going to be at least a half a push of them. I forgot to turn the camera on for when I lifted it out, but I'm going to put it over here. Or possibly it'll get a view of pouring it in that pipe. Okay, so let's take a look over here. That uh, came close to filling up the pipe. So now we'll wait uh, until it cools off and we'll see what we got. Here's an incredible amount of shrinkage. Colorado metal. There you go. I imagine it's probably even cool enough for me to take everything apart there. I guess we can see what happens. Worst thing can happen is they can be fried alive, huh? Nobody miss one old redneck. very much. There you go. It, uh, it looks hot. Whatever it's going to take, it'll be tomorrow. I'm going to let it cool all night long. I don't think there's any rush. The only thing i got to worry about putting up is the foundry, and it's a little bit hot to maybe worry about taking it over that threshold just yet. Got her sitting there, ready to go in the garage. And it'll cool down for about an hour, and then I'll come back. I sort of pushed myself a little bit to quit being so lazy and get that done yesterday because it was the one day, maybe for a week now, that's no rain predicted. You can see we're in between rains right now. So it's really strange. I had a hard time getting that uh, 
getting that little booger up off the grass. It was stuck to all the material there. It was stuck down like it was glued. I had to pry it up. It brought some grass with it. I guess I'll shovel a little, little bit of sand over in that hole. And then we're going to go in and pull that piece of metal out of the pipe. All right, I'm not going to fool around with this thing. I'm going to punch a couple of holes through it, put a couple of pins through those holes, and press it out with a hydraulic press. Although it feels like it might be relatively loose in there, the holes will come in handy if uh, if I do get one stuck, even if this even if this one is not. So out of my tank on top of it, let's get on with it. Alright, so there we are. We've got uh, that thing lined up there, some bolts through the holes, and uh, you can see that I've got bolts through it on the press, and we're going to push on that and see what it takes to push it out. See what happens. I'm glad my toes weren't under there. I thought it felt a little bit loose, and I was right. So there you are. At least I didn't break my mold form. Uh, you know, the coat and the drag box were right underneath it. And it hit them and didn't break them, so I guess I'm lucky there. So now we've got a big old chunk of aluminum, and uh, we're going to cut it a little bit with the saw and find out just uh, just how good that big old chunk of aluminum is. It's got the uh, a lot of shrinkage on this end. Of course, I guess you could cut <laughs> cut that off, and uh, who knows? Well, I got it set to uh, cut right about where I think uh, we just passed the bottom of that trunk spot, and hopefully we won't find a lot of bubbles or other kind of voids in this thing. As you can tell by looking, it's going to take a while to cut, so through the magic of turning the camera off, I'm going to let you wait until it's over, and then I'll magically have this done in a few seconds. Well, last night while I was trying to cut this thing, I uh, did a stupid thing. I, uh, I went in to eat supper, and I came back out, and my motor was melted, so I've done 
what uh, Chris B257 would call a temporary lash up. This is, uh, this is redneck engineering at its very best. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, I, I left the duct tape off of it and I'm sorry about that, but I'm getting a little low on it. I think it might finish cutting through. This uh, genuine Harbor Freight motor here, this thing is seized up tight as a Scotsman's wallet, you know? And uh, Lita melted the uh, pasture. Look at there, I, I tried turning it with a pair of pliers and it's, it's seized. So we'll continue on with this until until it burns up and melts down or something, but hopefully I'll get the end of this along the block cut off here in a little bit. Well, even considering all the redneck engineering, this thing's uh, just nearing the end of the cut there. And uh, nobody could do fine work like that with a redneck. No other group could possibly do better engineering than that. Uh, in a second it's going to fall off of there and then we'll find out if it's full of bubbles. Alright, so it's cut off there and uh, got a little little bit of a bubble here. A little bubble here. And a couple of pieces of steel right in there. Uh, right along in there. And I think when I threw those pistons in, there's locating pins in the to locate the rings on them and some of them at least for two cycle motorcycles there are and I may have thrown a couple little pieces of, of steel in there and it looks like that's what I found right there with a couple of pieces but I would say that looks pretty good we may just uh, run it across the mill for a minute and see what it cleans up like alright so I just sort of smoothed off the really top end of this thing which is full of bubbles but came around to the uh, bottom side of it here I, I cut across here at the same height that I cut here but on this side I took the vacuum and I tried to suck the chips off the head of it and, and it's just smooth as silk there which there's a few little bubbles on that edge there right next to that spot and a few little bubbles out at the edge, but it doesn't look like I've got any any problem with bubbles in the center of it. What I'm going to have to do is get a little air nozzle to blow the chips out of the way of the cutter. You can you can tell just by looking at the difference in uh, how it looks from one side to the other. One's all shiny and smooth, and the other one's got work got little grooves where the cutter dragged the chips across. So there you are. We went through the, the whole mess and I imagine that the, the big piece over there is going to be like that pretty much all the way through. That's what I'm expecting. So I can cut out the, the amount that I need and I'll have quite a bit left over. And uh, I may work on smoothing that up some just to see how far the bubbles and then from the side there. But this, like I say, this is the end that had all the shrinkage and the big donut hole. So on one side, it's not doing too good. But there that ends the, a lot of firsts here. First, uh, first big piece of aluminum for me to cast uh, just to have aluminum bar stock. I cast pulleys before. You know, but uh, this is this is one of the pulleys that I cast before, and of course I machined the the grooves. But uh, I made you know three or four of them, and uh, they got bubbles. So that's why I was worried about bubbles with this. Anyway, like I said, it's a momentous uh, job. Burned up the motor on my stupid uh, horror freight uh, bandsaw. Got one ordered, but I've got a temporary Mickey Mouse rig there until then. And uh, on this piece of junk grizzly mill, 
the uh, spindle nut came off. I have, I have a hard time keeping that nut tight and I've used a big old long pipe wrench to tighten it down and it'll just come loose again. So I, I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, the good advice would be if you see me buy a piece of machinery, don't buy that kind. Get something else. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching and uh, if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be pretty, pretty neat. Thank you.